Welcome to Mr. UFC Vegas Fight Club TV. I am Kyle, your host. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the bet review show for UFC Fight Night 140, Ponzinibbio vs. Magni. We're going to talk about our best bet that we had for purchase on Wager Talk. We're also going to talk about our free play and the card as a whole. Interesting night of fights. These fights, it's always, or these cards, I should say, it's always, uh, you know, maybe not the highlight fights and the highlight big names, but always these do come through with some solid fights, and there was some great ones. Main event was interesting. Co-main event was interesting, so there were some fun fights to watch on this card. So we'll get into the best bet. But before we do, do not forget to subscribe, like, Head kick the bell icon, get involved with Fight Club TV. It's a growing UFC and gambling channel all in one spot. And, of course, as always, we continue the conversation down below. So drop a comment. Let me know how you guys did on your bets, your overall thought. Um, did you guys like my best bet? Did you guys agree with it prior to the fight? Let me know your thoughts down below. Definitely make sure you hit that like button so I know what content you guys are enjoying. Um, but what we will talk about first is the best bet play. The best bet play was on Cynthia Calvillo to defeat Paulina Botello. And this fight here, a lot of moving parts to this prior to the fight. This fight, you had uh, uh, Cynthia Calvillo was a plus 130 heading into the weigh-ins. Now, this was something that, taking a look at it, and I talked to many of you guys um, uh, on, the, on the channel here and, and through the comment section on my prediction show video. And a lot of you guys are talking about, of course, as soon as I heard it as well, she misses weight. And the video comes out, or not comes out, but I saw the video of her attempting to make weight, and she looked miserable. She looked, um, and she was overweight. She just didn't look happy. And then there was a little bit of a stumble uh, when she was up there, which people are talking about. She, you know, obviously was just looking like she was going to faint and pass out. All of these things were happening. And, of course, for me, I, you know, I try to, you know, see where the line was going to go. And for me, I thought the line would actually start to move down, come more closer to fight night. Her being the bigger name, her having a little bit more experience, was going to be something that I thought a plus 130 early in the week. I placed my bet on it and thought the line would shift a little bit more towards down to, you know, maybe maybe a plus 110. Maybe even she she becomes even almost at a pick em at a at a at minus 105, minus 110. Thought the line would really shift in her favor. And things did definitely change when all this came out when she misses weight. And for me, obviously, that was a huge thing I was worried about when I saw the video come out, talk to you guys. Some people were completely uh, not betting her at all because of that. And then the line shifted enormously the other way. So then I ended up, which normally I do not do. Once I have my bet in, and I, like I always say, I have my allotted money that I do per event. And 80% or so per event is going on my best bet play. The other one, free play, parlays, other things that I'm trying to magnify some of these odds. And it went up to a plus 178 come fight night. and Or fight, yeah, fight night. And I put more on her. And the more that things were coming out, and some people were saying that, you know, they, you know, it wasn't as bad as it, as it looked. And all these things, I was trying to find some reports. And one of them was their coach. And their coach said she actually was just very upset on the fact that she obviously missed weight. She was not happy. But the fact that she did not stumble because she couldn't, um... She couldn't stand or was going to pass out. They said she actually just tripped over a towel um, that they were, I guess, she didn't want to um, expose herself when she was trying to, you know, have the, they had the big curtain up and all these other things they're trying to do. So, you know, that I wasn't sure. Now, now, do you believe that? Do you think that that's true or not? I kind of went with it that it's going to be, a, it's a true statement that they wouldn't say that if, if she was really looking to pass out, they would not even just acknowledge it. They would say, yes, yeah, she, you know, we're, we're trying to rehydrate her, get her back ready to go for tomorrow night's fight. But it was coming out a little bit more that, that it maybe was more of the towel situation. Who knows if that's true or not still, but that was what was coming out. Now, the other part of that, if you take a look at, at, at this as a whole, is that she had over, she had about 24 hours because I think she waited about nine o'clock the, the night before. So she had over 24 hours fight night. That was that was Friday at 9, I think is when she did it. Then you've got fight night is Saturday 
at whatever time, 10 o'clock at night. So she had a ton of time to really rehydrate, to get back in together and get her, 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 her mentally ready for a fight against someone who she's a lot more experienced than. So there was a lot of good things to going into that fight. And then there was a lot of bad things with this way. And so obviously I, I was a little worried, but when it shot up to plus 178, I had to lay a little bit more. I didn't go crazy, but I went and I laid a little bit more because for me, I just thought it was way too good of odds to take uh, to not have a little bit more exposure to Cynthia Calvillo at plus almost 180 against Batelio. And Batelio is, is, is no slouch. I think she's definitely an up-and-comer. But all that happening was something very interesting. And now everybody was talking also about Calvillo's layoff. What would that be? What, how would that really affect her? She was caught smoking um, uh, marijuana and all that other things were going on with that. And then she had lost a very close fight to Carla Esparza. And that fight for me even too was something where you take a look at. Carla Esparza's tough. She's a veteran. She's definitely a different type of fighter when it comes to Botelho versus um, uh, Esparza. They're very different fighters. But the... I thought she fought, when I went back and rewatched the past fights of um, uh, Cynthia Calvillo, I thought her striking was very underrated. And it was something for me going into this fight, and, and those of you that did purchase uh, the $20 purchase on Wager Talk, I will have and will post the entire description of what I had prior to the event, of those people that did make the purchase, what was the write-up that they got to see prior to the fight. So I will post that down in the description here. But the big thing was... Rewatching her last few fights, I did not really at first think before I really watched them how good her striking was. Now, I'm not saying she's, you know, John Jones out there with her striking, but very underrated. She's a small girl. She's very much known for her, her ground and pound, where she is on the ground, where her movement is. I mean, she effortlessly moves and transitions extremely well when she's on the top, and she's able to get the back of many fighters and really expose some of their weaknesses. But the thing that I thought was was going to be a very telling sign going into this fight is that she's fighting a striker, going to be longer, going to be taller uh, in Batelio. She's going to be bigger, but definitely she is a a lot better of a striker than I thought. Her combination, she's got great footwork. She did not show too much of it in this fight because she knew she needed to go in. She was not going to have a striking match, but she could really handle herself standing. I, again. She's not someone that's going to knock anybody out or, 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 you know, drop somebody in that case. But she's able to really work the angles, get some striking, and work her way into getting somebody to the ground. And that was something that when I rewatched, I really liked what I saw from her against some pretty good fighters that are in that division. And again, the Carla Esparza fight, I thought, was a fight where you got a girl who... You know, Sparza likes to take you to the ground. She likes to, you know, get in there and make it dirty and get on top of you. Where you've got other fighters where you just like Batelio, who's more of a pure striker and a great striker. Pure striker. And she's going to now have to worry about those takedowns. And that was something where she could expose going into this fight. So when you take a look at it going into this fight, when they actually ended up getting in the cage, after all this uh, the BS going on with the weigh-in. Now, when they came in and, and this, this fight, there's not much to break down, obviously, because it was kind of a lopsided fight going, going to um, uh, Calvillo. But you take a look at it, you know, Obviously, I think the big thing was going to be the kicks coming from Batelio. Batelio loves to throw those kicks. She had a great knockout the fight prior with the solid body kick. But that was against something that, yes, that's going to be happening, possibly some leg kicks. But that was going to be something that there was going to be no way that Calvillo was going to allow a kickboxing match to be happening. Now, again, going into this weigh-in part of it, as much as I don't want to go back to that, but was she going to have the energy? And we were talking again to many of you guys, and, and I obviously I was not happy hearing that um, she didn't make weight. But was she gonna have the energy? And the one thing that she said prior to this fight too was, "I'm gonna look. I'm gonna go in there and look to finish this in the first round." So I like that she was had that that sense of urgency going into this fight. That maybe or maybe not, she was not gonna be 100. percent But going into this fight, she's looking quickly take her to the ground and finish this fight, and do not let the the gas tank possibly a depleted gas tank coming from Calvillo, actually affect this fight. So right away, you saw Batelio throw a solid body kick, and right away, um, uh, Cynthia Cavell caught it. 
and brought her to the ground. Although she was able to scramble uh, Botelio and get back up, and Cynthia tried to um, uh, keep her on the ground, but it was a nice spot because you could tell what Cynthia was looking for. Cynthia was looking for that kick. She knew it was a, definitely a strong kick that Botelio has, a strong weapon that she has, and she was waiting for it. And then again, she did the same thing and threw that body kick a little bit later into that first round and took her to the ground. And once she had side control of Batelio, I was hoping this fight would end. At that point, you know, it looked like obviously she was going to have the first round, had that top control. You know, she had a little bit more going on on her side than Batelio, but she had the ground and pat. I mean, she had the, the, the ground movement. She was trying to manipulate a little bit. Batelio was trying to do what she could, but you could tell the difference. And the levels that go into this game, where you've got somebody like her on top of you, that is a worst case scenario for someone like Battaglio, who probably was all she worked on was probably takedown defense, scrambling to get back up, all of that. And even with focusing on that, Cavillo is just so good on the ground and so determined on the ground. And now, was she a lot heavier coming into this fight? Who knows? But, and did it help her? Who knows? I mean, now you look at for the year. Uh, overweight fighters are 11 wins and 6 losses for the year. So I think that's pretty impressive also and a statistic going into this fight that I had in the back of my mind that they were 10 and 6 going into this fight that hey, you know what? Maybe there's something to be said about that and I know a lot of other people are talking about that and saying is it cheating? They're coming in big? All these other things. Although she gave up 20% of her purse you know what? A loss is more important than just giving up 20% of your purse. But going back to the fight, she got the side control. She was able to really do what she needed to do. As soon as she got her back, it looked like, I mean, Battaglio just really didn't know how to fight the hands, look to scramble. She just looked lost on the ground. Calvillo was able to choke her out in that first round. It was a very lopsided victory for her. Very impressive for Calvillo to go in there and dominate somebody like this. But I think the competition level between these two is a huge factor. And you've got Calvillo, who's been in the UFC, who has, you know, had a promotional push. She's kind of been that, she was, they were trying to push her to be that next big thing prior to losing against Esparza. But, you know, it's, you know, you've got someone like Botelio, who has, you know, definitely skill. There is no doubt I like her skill set. I just think she's not as well-rounded yet. But you put her up against another striker, and I think she wins. I mean, obviously, to a certain level, but I think she wins those fights. She has got that nice, long stance. She moves around well. She's got a good combination. It's just this was a fight and a terrible matchup for somebody like Battaglio coming in and knowing that, yeah, I need to worry about the constant threat of the takedown, and I'm not very good on the ground. So that was how that fight ended. It was a first round uh, submission for Cynthia Calvillo. That gets us the victory on our best bet play. So now our best bet play is 27 wins. 12 losses plus 25.24 units for the year and all of our best bets are on fighters with odds below minus 190. So over our last eight plays on our best bet play, over our last eight plays, we are six and two over our last eight plays. And four of those six wins have been underdogs as our best bet play. Anywhere from a plus 115 to a plus 130 that we've had on our best bet play. So Four of the six have been pure underdogs getting plus odds on our best bet play. So we're trying to bring value here on the best bets. Worked out again for us. It was a nice victory to get. And it was really nice victory to get early in the night. It wasn't like I had to wait until one in the morning to uh, to uh, watch the, the, the main event or co-main event or one of the other ones going right into it. Uh, at 10 o'clock, got into it, got the victory, and I could sit back and enjoy the rest of the night. And uh, there you have it on the best bet play. And uh, I, again, appreciate the support from everybody who purchases these picks, who, you know, continues to have conversation with me and the rest of the uh, Fight Club community in the comment section. It's been great. All you guys are great. And again, I appreciate the support. Glad we were able to cash in again on our best bet play. So the other one we will talk about is the free play. This is the next one that I was waiting for that um, on Saturday night. It was um, Elkins versus Llama, uh, Lamas. And, uh, you know, this... This fight here, you know, we went a little bit more value on Elkins, and there really wasn't much value on him. I mean, you take a look at this fight, and you know what? Lamas is just, he had, his gas tank is large. He ha he was so much faster than Elkins. I mean, Elkins had very small moments and highlights of, of this fight. But Elkins, I mean, I, I give credit to Lamas 
and how he's able to really get away from just the constant pressure that Elkins had. And, and he was able to do a lot of damage to, to Elkins. And you know what? There, there's a point where Elkins just needs to play defense, be a little bit smarter, and not use his face as defense. There's a point he needs to stop doing that. And I was hoping that, you know what, getting, and I think he was, um, I don't know the odds in front of me, but I think it was plus, plus 170, somewhere around there. And I'm thinking that at this point, he's got to start evolving as a mixed martial artist. I don't see that. If you look at Elkins from, uh, you know, last, uh, this past Saturday to five fights ago, he's the same fighter. And then you see other fighters five fights ago, what they do, how they change their game, how they try to just evolve and get better. And he's doing the same things over and over again. And you know what? He's won some unbelievable wins against, you know, some guys that were well above him, but he's starting to come back down to where he actually, the real expectation of Darren Elkins is. And, and it's just, he's a, he's, he's a tough fighter. He's definitely not, I mean, without a doubt, he's good. I mean, he's that, you can't be a chump and be, you know, uh, fighting in some of these top level fights, but he has to evolve. He has to get better. He has to work on certain parts of his game. And I think that Lamas did a phenomenal job really finding those, those, those sweet spots and softened up Elkins throughout the fight. Elkins loses. Lamas does get the victory on our free play. So there you have it on our plays. You know, it was an interesting night. Then seeing in the, in the main event, seeing Ponzinibbio versus Magni, that was a, a, an interesting fight as well. And Ponzinibbio, I really hope that they really start to give him more respect. And, and uh, you know, he's won, I, honestly, I don't have that information in front of me, but he's won so many fights in a row. He's fought some top-level guys. He's really looking great. He's got power. He's got skill. I liked having some of the value on Magni at plus 260. I thought that was, did not have a bet on it, but I thought that that was some value there, that there was value on Magni. And really, even with the, the reach and all these advantages that Magni had and the ground game and all these things that you thought that, you know what, there's, there's a possibility that Magni can make this a dirty fight and, and possibly win a decision. There was a chance for that. But Ponzinibbio, it was just, he fought so well. And those leg kicks, I mean, he was just chopping down Magni from beginning to end. And Magni had no answer for it. He, he really had no answer for checking the leg kicks, trying to move around a little bit better. I mean, constant pressure from Ponzinibbio, just Magni did not have an answer for it. So I really hope that Ponzinibbio gets another fight against Against a big name. I think he deserves a big name at this point and how good that he's looked. But I, I need to maybe give him a little bit more respect because Ponzinibbio looked fantastic. So he was able to go out there and get that victory. Just wanted to give a little tidbit on that. But um, definitely comment down below. Let me know what you guys have. What bets you had. Did you win, lose? What got, uh, Did you guys purchase the best bet play? How did you guys feel about the overall card? We move on to another card next Saturday uh, or next week. Uh, it's an early one. Uh, it's like a six six thirty in the morning uh, uh, card. Not the greatest card again, um, but then we've got some phenomenal cards cleaning out the rest of this year. Just an unbelievable amount of cards um, with great fights and great opportunities to win money. So again, we hit our best bet play. Our best bet play for the year: twenty seven wins, twelve losses, plus twenty five point two four units for the year. And uh, you know, once again, we keep moving forward with all best bets. On fighters, minus 190 and lower. And again, our last eight plays, six and two, and four of them were underdogs. So got to keep it going. Got to keep it moving. And again, I appreciate all the support. And this is Mr. UFC Vegas, Fight Club TV. <laughs>